Disclaimer, this list is very flawed, more so than the ones I usually do. We are still very much figuring out the game, and I will probably remake this video at some point down the road. This is solely based off of my first impressions of the game. Number 10, Toxin. Infect enemies on contact for three seconds, causing them to receive 30% extra damage from all sources. As the only white item on this list, the Toxin has made a name for itself as a very quick and dirty way to scale up damage. Risk of Rain Returns is a very different game from 2. In 2, you have all kinds of ways to increase your base damage from watches, focus crystals, armor piercing rounds, crowbars, and crit. And while Returns does still have crowbars and crit, crowbars are significantly nerfed and crit is harder to come by due to the fact there are no longer printers and the item output in general is a lot lower than two. But one thing Returns does have is the Toxin. With the Toxin, standing close to an enemy will increase all of your damage by 30%, and stacking it will yield an additional 15% damage. Now that might not seem like a lot, but for reference, Brilliant Behemoth is only a 20% damage increase. The Toxin is this game's focus crystal, but it's better in basically every way. For one, you don't need to stand in the enemy's face for the entire time to get damage, the effect lasts for 3 seconds after touching an enemy, but also just due to the nature of the game being in 2D, you have to get in their face a lot more. The Toxin shines especially well on melee survivors like Miner and Loader, but this is a solid item on the entire cast. Even a ranged survivor like Sniper can make good use out of it. And for that reason, it's definitely earned a spot on this list. Real quick, if you want to help support me and my family, hit the subscribe button. And number 9, a Red Whip. Leaving combat for 2 seconds boosts your movement speed by 60. Now it may be a surprise to see this item on the list, considering its reputation in 2, but Whip is a much better item in this game. For one, it's twice as effective, being a 60% speed boost as opposed to 30, but it's also a lot easier to activate, only requiring you to be out of combat for 2 seconds instead of 5. Mobility can be really hard to come by in returns, the exclusion of 3D printers makes finding speed a lot more difficult, and I'd argue speed is even more important in this game than it is in 2. More speed means finding the teleporter faster, more looting during the teleporters, and just more survivability in general. Red Whip is extremely powerful in this game and has saved my ass on multiple occasions. Green items in general tend to be really good in returns, and you'll be seeing more of them coming up. This video is sponsored by the Ridge Wallet, which I'm thrilled to say I love this product. It has legitimately been my obsession over the last couple weeks. The Ridge Wallet is very sleek, but it has room for up to 12 cards and room for cash. What I really like about the Ridge Wallet is how secure it is. No joke, things used to fall out of my wallet all the time. I recently had an experience where I lost my ID, but ever since I switched out my old bulky leather wallet for a Ridge, I have not felt more secure. And this might sound kind of stupid, but I'm a really tactile person. I like to fidget with things on my desk, and the Ridge has been my go-to choice for the last couple weeks. There's just something really satisfying about the brushed aluminum. It makes me kind of excited to pay for stuff now. It comes in 30 plus styles, including leather, if you want to go the more traditional route. And the Ridge Wallet is the perfect gift this holiday season. I'm probably going to get my dad one. And it has a 99 day risk free trial where you can get your full refund if they don't love it. Plus a lifetime warranty that ensures the gift isn't just for now, it's for life. Ridge has great products and you can shop the holiday sale by going to ridge.com slash disputed and get up to 30% off through December 20th. Use my link and enter for a chance to win a Ridge bundle worth $4,000. Thanks to Ridge for sponsoring the channel. Now back to the video. At number 8, Guardian's Heart. Gain a 60 health shield. Recharges when out of danger for 7 seconds. This item is essentially the PSG of Risk of Rain Returns, which is another item that's kind of infamous in Risk of Rain 2, but here in Returns, the Guardian's Heart is much better for one reason and one reason only. Shield is busted in Returns. Some of you may be familiar with a mechanic in Risk of Rain 2 called One-Shot Protection, which essentially means you can't get killed by a hit of damage when you're above 90% health, but in Returns, if you have any amount of shield up, you have one-shot protection. It is impossible for any one source of damage to take away more than your shield. You can test this by jumping off the map and taking fall damage. A jump like this should put you at half health, but since I have shield, that's all that gets taken away. And you don't even need to have full shield to get this effect either. Any amount of shield, even one shield, will do this. This item will also just make you a lot less reliant on healing. This item has been carrying me through the judgment trials and is definitely something you should look for in your run. At number 7, we have Arms Race. Drones gain a 5% chance on hit to fire a missile for 300% total damage, and a 9% on hit to fire a mortar for 85% total damage. And it also summons a unique drone, which regenerates after each stage. This is very similar to spare drone parts in Risk of Rain 2. I know I keep comparing things to 2, but that's just what I'm most familiar with, so deal with it. In Risk 2, all you really need to get through a run is spare drone parts and a million drones. If you have that, you'll be fine. Now, obviously, Returns is not 2. There are 
quite a few differences between the games, a notable one being that drones are actually a lot better in Returns than they are in 2. Drones are great at dealing with flying enemies, and they can actually utilize some of your items. If you have gasoline and a drone gets a kill, it will actually be able to utilize gas. This isn't the case with every item, mainly just on kill effects, but it's certainly a step up from how they were in 2. And the fact that drone parts are a green item in this game means it's a lot more common. Arms Race also stacks decently well, with it increasing the chance to fire a missile and increases the mortar damage. If you have this item with a few drones, they will melt the enemies. Just make sure if you're going for a build like this to keep enemies at a distance, because drones are a bit squishier in returns. Melee characters like Miner unfortunately don't get a ton of use out of this item. If you're close range, your drones definitely die out very quick. I was a little iffy on putting this item on the list because while it is very good, it's certainly not as consistent as most of the other items in this video, but I think it deserves a spotlight anyway just because of how ridiculous it can be if you have the right build. At number 6, Royal Medallion, 10% chance on hitting a boss monster to drop a buffing wisp that improves health regeneration, attack speed, movement speed, and base damage for 10 seconds. This is the first item on this list that is unique to returns, it was not in the first game, and oh boy does this thing rock. The in-game description of bosses drop a powerful buffing wisp when hit doesn't even begin to do this item justice. The buffs that drop from this item make the teleporter events way easier. I won't say it trivializes them completely, the TPs in this game can still be incredibly difficult, but Mandalian helps a ton. You can get up to 10 of these at a time, and picking up a new Wisp buff will reset the duration on all of them, so if you play your cards right, you can get a ton of use out of this thing. Another nice feature is the definition of boss enemy is a little bit different than it is in 2. In 2, items that affect bosses, namely armor piercing rounds, only affect teleporter bosses and special bosses like the ally worship unit and mithrix. But in returns, a boss enemy just refers to the entire class of monsters. So naturally spawning vagrants, titans, imp overlords, and so on will also be dropping these buffs. This is very helpful in the final level contact light as these types of enemies will spawn all of the time. But where this item really shines is during the providence fight. This this item legitimately makes this fight 30% faster, the damage is just so immense, you're getting both attack speed and base damage from this thing, it's crazy. And obviously the speed is very helpful during Providence 2, especially during Phase 4. This is by far one of the best green items in the game, and I would recommend unlocking it as soon as possible if you have not done so already. And number 5, Happiest Mask. Killed enemies spawn ghosts that last 15 seconds with 100% health and 70% damage. If you've played Risk of Rain 1, you know exactly why this is here. If you've only played 2, you're probably thinking Grandpa got lost in the sauce again. But I assure you, this item absolutely deserves a spot on this list. It's nice to see this item in its former glory because Hopu did it dirty in Risk of Rain 2. Now, what makes this item so good is that it has a 100% activation rate when you kill an enemy. Now, I should go without saying that's really fucking good. Not only is this just a lot of extra damage, the ghosts also serve as amazing distractions, keeping enemies off your back while you focus on the bigger threats that will kill you if left alone. Most of the time, it's the bugs. It, it's probably going to be the bugs. The bugs are the worst. I hate these things with every fiber of my being. I know it's a bit of a tangent, but I've died to these things so many times, it's not even funny. But yeah, Happy Mask is an amazing item. It has a couple flaws. The first one being it does not create ghosts from boss monsters, which sucks, but honestly it's not that big of a deal. The ghosts from regular enemies are more than enough to make this item busted. But the main flaw is that it doesn't really help you during that Providence fight. Killing the robots does spawn ghosts, and they give it a valiant effort, and I respect it, but uh, they, they don't really help you against this. At number 4, Ceremonial Daggers. Killing an enemy fires out 4 heat siaking bolts that deal 100% damage. Fun fact about that description, that is not how you spell seeking. That was a typo in the original game and they left it in. Nice touch. Now originally I had this item on the list before Happy Mask, but after playing a little bit more I have to say, Ceremonial daggers feel better. One thing I've noticed about returns is the area of effect items are super hard to come by. In Risk 2, I feel like you can usually find some AoE by stage 5, but in this game, it's scarce, and I think a lot of the difficulty in this game can be attributed to that. Having to individually kill every enemy makes it really hard to progress, but ceremonial daggers will aid you in that pursuit immensely. 80% of the enemies you come across will be small things like Lumerians, Wisps, children, and you don't realize just how many of these smaller enemies there are until you pick up this item and they proceed to wipe out the entire screen. Daggers in this game make me want to cream. There's no better feeling than killing one enemy and having it chain into 10 kills. This is again really effective on contact light where there's just so much shit spawning all the time. Sadly, like Happiest Mask, this item does not do very much to Providence, but that's okay. Ceremonial daggers aren't single target damage and they're not supposed to be. But when it comes to taking out horde after horde of enemies, Kagger's got your back. 
Number three, Ifrit's Horn, 8% chance on hit to fire a flaming wave that incinerates enemies for 300% total damage. Now, I did not include any other yellow items on this list, not because they're bad, mainly because it's a very rare item category and I'm still kind of trying to figure them out. I was going to put both Legendary Spark and Ifrit's Horn in the number three spot, but Ifrit's Horn definitely stands out to me a little bit more. The flaming wave from this item is so good, and it's total damage, meaning it's stronger with stronger attacks. It's like an ATG that also has area of effect damage that can hit multiple things. Things. It also knocks enemies back and acts as a mini stun. While different, it's very much the molten perforator of this game, with legendary spark being the charge perforator, which is good in its own right. And you know what, fuck it, we're putting it at number three too. Legendary spark has an 8% chance on hit to create two sparks that smite enemies for 200% total damage. It's the single target variation of Ifrit's horn, it hits twice, and again, it's total damage. This one drops from Ancient Wisps, which you can get as early as stage two in your run. So if you get this early, it can definitely help snowball you into a very powerful run. But super solid items, so yeah. At number two, Laser Turbine, using skills, charges the generator by 7.8% per second. At full power, fire a laser for 2,000% damage. Are you tired of enemies attacking you, shoving you in a locker, calling you a little piss boy, taking your lunch money? You want them to stop doing that? Stop calling you a little piss boy? You peed your pants in Miss Olsen's homeroom two years ago, now they won't stop calling you a little piss boy? Is that your situation? Well, with Laser Turbine, you are a piss boy no more. All the bad men will go away and you can finally ask Cindy to the crab ball. This item is amazing. The best point of reference if you're a Risk of Rain 2 player is Resonance Disc. Like the disc, Laser Turbine will create a huge blast wiping out a bunch of enemies, but these two items are not the same. In Risk 2, Resonance Disc has three major flaws that prevent it from being good. One, the game is 3D, so the disc will only be able to kill a fraction of the enemies it would be able to in 2D. Two, it's inaccurate. The amount of times I've charged up a disc only to have it hit absolutely nothing, or worse, a pot, is too many to count. But the most critical flaw with the Resi Disc is the method at which it charges. You have to kill enemies rapidly for it to fire. So what happens is if you're having a bad run or you're fighting Mithrix, it just sits in your inventory as a paperweight. Laser Turbine fixes all of these flaws. Instead of having to kill enemies, it charges by using your skills, which is something you'll be doing anyway. And when this item goes off, it will kill or at least significantly damage everything threatening you. The blast is huge as well, so it's kind of a challenge to miss with this thing. But the best part is you can also use this against Providence since the activation requirement only relies on you using your skills. This thing shreds and I can confidently say this is the second best item in the game. Before I get to number one, I just wanna say I know there were a bunch of items left off this list. I could easily make a part two. I kinda of tried to pick items that were A, really good and B, interesting to talk about. Stuff like ATGs and ukuleles are obviously really good, especially the red ATG, that one definitely could have been on the list. Infusion as well, Infusion doesn't have the 100 health cap anymore. You can get all the way up to 9,999 HP with one infusion, which is pretty insane. A lot of the reds as well, the duplicator, scepter, the jetpack is another really good one. Again, just take this list with a grain of salt. If your favorite isn't on here, it isn't because it's bad, it's probably just because I didn't have room. But one thing I am sure of is the number one spot. Unless it gets nerfed or changed in some way, I can confidently say that the Prophet's Cape is the best item in the game. This item briefly blocks all incoming damage upon being struck, recharging after 15 seconds. Blocking damage heals you for 3 HP. This item is essentially the safer spaces of Risk of Rain Returns, but it manages to be even more busted somehow. Every 15 seconds, you get a Get Out of Jail free card. This item saves you from taking so much damage. All it really requires is that you're okay at jumping over most attacks. The invincibility makes it so you can make a lot more mistakes and not be punished for them. And the invincibility frames you get from this item make it great for offense as well. If you're dealing with a large horde of enemies and you want to get in there, you can leverage Prophet's Cape to safely get in some burst damage before retreating. And if you have a Guardian's Heart, the invincibility will give you enough time to recharge your shield as well, which just adds up to even more damage being avoided. The secondary effect of having it heal block damage is really good too. Now, just healing with Prophet's Cape is kind of hard to do, but it's powerful because it applies to all blocked attacks, which is probably best shown on Enforcer, since blocking damage is kind of his entire shtick. But the main reason this item is here is because of what it does to the final boss fight. Prophet's Cape makes Providence a joke. Providence is not a particularly difficult boss, but he is scary. While most of his attacks are easy to avoid, if he does hit you, he hits you hard. But with Prophet's Cape, you can eat a shot every 15 seconds and not be punished. This is especially useful during the lasers in phase 4 because if you get hit by them, they drain your HP in seconds. But with a Prophet's Cape, you can use the iframes to quickly get up a ladder, saving yourself hundreds of HP. No other item keeps you alive as well as this one does, and it also looks really, really cool. 
It's astounding to me that this is only a green item. I really feel like this should be a red, if not a yellow. But that's all for my list. What items do you think should be on here? If you want to see more Risk of Rain Returns list videos, make sure to leave a like and subscribe to stay updated on all things Risk of Rain and my neighbor calling me about Cake Boss. I wish he would stop. Thank you to my members for supporting the channel, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Ta-ta for now.